Another Christmas has come and gone in Zimbabwe. A new year has begun. In the corporate towers of Harare's central business district, new deals are being done. And on the pavements below, it's business as usual for the children nobody wants. An unrelenting daily struggle for survival. There are no accurate statistics on the growing number of children who are desperately in need of help throughout Zimbabwe. Children orphaned by the HIV AIDS pandemic. Children abandoned by families unable to support them. Children abused sexually. Children exploited financially. Children without an education. Children without a future. Children without hope. For some children, however, there is a future. There is hope. 15 minutes walk from the city center is this house, a former family residence, outwardly much like its neighbors. But this is a house with a difference. For this is the headquarters of an organization that is making a difference in the lives of hundreds of thousands of children across Zimbabwe. Save the Children, good day. Save the Children Norway is an international, non-governmental organization dedicated to improving the lives of children the world over. It has no political or religious affiliations. Its focus is totally on children. Its mission is to promote recognition of and respect for the rights of each and every child. Its goal is to provide programs that ensure all children have an opportunity to a life of freedom and security. The activities that we have been involved in uh, have been changing depending on the situation, depending on the need at that particular moment. For this uh, strategic period, which is a four-year period, our focus is on fulfilling children's rights to quality and relevant education, uh, prevention of sexual abuse, but violence in general and sexual abuse, uh, HIV and AIDS, working with orphans and other vulnerable children, and general child rights. And we work in partnership with uh, other organizations, government ministries, local authorities, to create awareness in different communities and also to ensure that children are given a platform to participate. So child participation is one of the key working principles that we employ. Yes, you, you can confirm the, the bookings now. As Save the Children Norway's program director in Zimbabwe, Sibangani Shumba is tasked with the responsibility of ensuring that the organization's programs are carried out on the ground. He works with a team of four managers and a number of field officers. We deliver our programs through the partners that we work with in the communities. We do the planning together with those partners. We do the monitoring of activities together. We identify new opportunities, new avenues for intervention together. And at the end of the day, we seek to achieve uh, better results and better lives for children. Save the Children Norway began working in Zimbabwe in 1983. Initially, it focused on co-community development projects. We used to However, that changed in 1998. Then we realized that we were the ones implementing and we needed to build capacities within different structures in the country, looking at other organizations, local organizations, looking at see, um, local authorities, because they are here permanent. We give the back technical backstopping, we give the financial support, we give the capacity, but they do implement the activities on the ground. Through partners, we can reach more children, whom we cannot reach if we were to do it by ourselves. In addition to its education and child protection programs, Save the Children also provides supplementary feeding programs that benefit more than 200,000 children, young mothers and elderly victims of poverty. Good, 
we have programs that are entirely national in their nature. But then we also have projects that are district specific. That gives us a national picture because again, in each province, we have a certain number of districts that we work with. Regardless of where it operates or the nature of its projects, every child's basic right to an education remains one of the primary objectives of the organization's activities throughout Zimbabwe. This right is uh, fundamental. It will lead to other rights. And if these children have access to education, their knowledge will broaden and uh, they will be able to contribute also to their communities. Indeed, their opportunities to contribute begin even before they leave school. The UN Convention on the Rights of the Child talks about the need to listen to children and it's actually in our vision as an organization that we should listen to children and respect their influence. Even if we have some ideas, they cannot be put for the benefit of children without involving children. So we, we talk to children in order to get their views, in order to get their contributions because children themselves have said to us, anything that you do without us is not for us. They are involved right from the assessment of the issues that affect them. They are involved in planning. They also participate in monitoring and evaluation. Sadza gives us dash growth energy. Save the Children's Sadza. Educational Initiative has two so basic objectives. Water is to increase dash. children's Why? access to education, and to improve the quality of that education. Here, the Zimbabwe government is a key partner. Our mission in the Ministry of Education is to provide high quality education. And I'm proud to say that Save the Children is helping us in fulfilling our mission statement. For example, if we need high quality education, we need the resources. And here, Save the Children has assisted us in, having, in acquiring those resources. Look at behind me, there's a classroom block which has been constructed through the assistance of Save the Children. We have textbooks which have been uh, sourced by Save the Children. It's wonderful. <laughs> Machurinje Primary is one of four satellite schools Save the Children Norway has helped to build in Rushinga, a remote rural district in northeastern Zimbabwe. Its pupils come from villages up to seven kilometers away. Before it was built, some children had to walk nearly 20 kilometers to get to their nearest school. This school is here now because of a sheer determination by Save the Children Norway, which paid for the materials, and the parents of these children who provided the labor. I think if Save the Children hasn't come here, we couldn't have done it. Could have taken us even 10 years to build that block. We treat them as uh, key stakeholders whose uh, uh, duty is also to contribute to their children enjoying the right to education. Some 700 kilometers to the southeast of Rushinga, the pupils of Denyani School in Cholocho district are the beneficiaries of another Save the Children funded program. These children will go through school sharing textbooks. Few would have known what a novel or a reference book looked like until the arrival of this donkey drawn cart, one of the 10 mobile libraries that have added a new dimension to education in rural Zimbabwe. The library is packed with lots of information, especially on general awareness information, on healthy living, and also academic books, how they can improve uh, in, in school. I can proudly say that a lot of kids actually know what a book looks like, and they have access to their own book that they can go through when they go home. For these children, however, there is no home to go to. These are Zimbabwe's street children, children orphaned, abandoned, and abused by social and economic forces they cannot begin to comprehend. But they are not without help. 
The Presbyterian Children's Club, sandwiched in the heart of Harare's central business district, has provided food and schooling to hundreds of disadvantaged children for more than a decade. The project, funded by Save the Children, also tries to bring broken families together again. For the last two years, we've been able to get as many as 80 children reunited with their families, and they are now going to schools near their homes. And it is my wish that this program continues as long as the children are still on the streets. That will depend to a large extent on Save the Children Norway's ability to keep funding such projects. We are not a big organization compared to other international organizations. The money that we get from our donors, uh, and our donors are mainly NORAD and the Norwegian public, we also do a bit of fundraising. Uh, really gets to the child and a study was carried out i think it was in 19 in two or three somewhere there by the world bank in some of our areas and they said yes we are using money for what we intended to be used for it's becoming increasingly difficult however for the organization to meet the mounting demands being made upon its fixed financial resources in terms of child protection alone it's reliably estimated that there are more than one and a half million orphans in Zimbabwe. So the challenges are quite huge for organizations in Zimbabwe. We are having to request for more funding and you know that globally resources are shared among many countries where the needs are also great. And we also have the challenge that professional people are living in Zimbabwe. So you're having to train people over and over to carry out the work that we want to do. Whatever the future holds, Lois Mushonga believes Save the Children Norway can look back with justifiable pride on its achievements over the past 25 years in galvanizing action for children's rights in Zimbabwe. When people think about children's issues, I think we are one of the organizations they quickly think about. Save the Children Norway can also take credit yes. for laying the groundwork for the National Plan of Action, the program set up to care for children orphaned by HIV and AIDS, which is now an agreement between the government of Zimbabwe, UNICEF, and other organizations. Save the Children had also been instrumental in setting up the child-friendly national budget, a mechanism through which NANGO, the National Association of Non-Government Organizations, lobbies the government to provide more funding to those ministries and departments that work with children. But I think our biggest achievement really is ensuring that children are protected. We have been working with the Minister of Justice, we have been working with Childline and other organizations to ensure that the legal system reviews its policies its, in terms of how they look at child sexual abuse. Now we have what we call victim-friendly courts. There is a victim-friendly system that runs from the police station when children report. There is a victim-friendly uh, place in hospitals where children are examined. And we have been part of it from the beginning. Lois Mushonga takes great personal pride in the fact that she's the first Zimbabwean to head a Norwegian organization. And she feels a deep sense of satisfaction in her contribution to the organization's success as a guardian of children's rights in Zimbabwe. Okay. Much of that success is due to a loyalty shared by other members of her staff. I've been here for 17 years. This is actually my 18th year. And there are other people who have been here for more than that. Um, it says a lot about the organization if people can stay that long. I think it's a heart issue. I feel very proud to be part and parcel of making a difference in some child's life. And Save the Children Norway is making a huge difference daily in the lives of more and more Zimbabwean children. It is holding out the promise of a better future to new generations in previously disadvantaged remote rural communities. And it is helping to ease the hurt and suffering of a legion of abandoned and abused victims 
of an increasingly hostile environment. But it can only do so much. Maybe if they could only get a day, maybe just one day, to get a decent meal, to get some decent attention and support from the public, to get some hearing from the public, maybe that would be a very good present for Christmas for these kids. None of these children got that present. Perhaps next Christmas will be different.